the Duxbury Rural and Historical Society envisions Duxbury as a welcoming community committed to embracing the significance and diversity of its historic and natural resources. Julie Thompson spoke with archivist and historian Carolyn Ravenscroft about what's new and next for the Society. We are so pleased to be joined today by Carolyn Ravenscroft, who is the historian and archivist for the Duxbury Rural and Historical Society. Welcome, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. It's excellent to have you. Can you give us a little brief bio on you and how you ended up being in this position? Sure, great, I'd love to tell. Um, so growing up, uh, like most people who end up being archivists, I loved history. I loved being dragged around by my parents to various museums and reading historical fiction as a kid. Um, but after receiving my bachelor's degree in history, there's not much that most uh, history majors do. And so I had a variety of jobs until I went back to graduate school at Simmons University and got my master's in both archival work and history and ended up here in 2009. And I've been at the Duxbury Rural and Historical Society ever since, loved every minute. Oh, the, wow, that's excellent. So you've got a long tenure there. And can you just- I am currently the longest tenured person here. <laughs> Can you just tell tell us what is an archivist? What, what does it take to be an archivist? Uh, so it's uh, very similar and akin to a librarian, um, except what I take care of is not books. I take care of the manuscripts, diaries, letters, log books, old maps, things of that nature. So primary documents, um, here at the Drew Archival Library of the DRHS is just a treasure trove of hundreds and thousands of, of collections and papers and photographs that I'm responsible for, not only caring for and organizing, but also making sure that researchers have access to them. Perfect, yeah, and I saw on your website, it's pretty amazing what the Drew Archive Library has. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Yes, so yeah, for such a small town, we have an amazing uh, array of history here. Yeah, you really do. So the Rural and Historical Society takes care of buildings, lands, and history and mm -hmm. collecting. So can you talk a little bit about the difference and, and, for example, the buildings? Okay, absolutely. Let me just take a step back and say that we were formed in the 1880s as one of the first land preservation organizations. We were originally called the Duxbury Rural Society and nicknamed locally the Rurals. And so the first thing that the Duxbury Rural Society did long before it even got into the history game was to do things to beautify the town and acquire land to keep open spaces. And uh, to date, we have over 100 acres of land around town. Um, and then we became a historical society. Around 1900, we started morphing into a historical society. And to that end, we um, manage four historic buildings. We have two house museums, the Bradford House on Tremont Street and the King Caesar House on King Caesar Road. Our main office is a beautiful three-story federal on Washington Street built by Nathaniel Windsor Jr. Uh, and we also have a lovely antique house on uh, Clark's Island in Duxbury Bay called Cedar Field. Um, and the archives that I'm sitting here in today release from the town. It's the original library of Duxbury. Okay, excellent. Now you also have, um, the, the, your, it lists land that you're responsible for and you said you're over 200 mm -hmm. acres of land. So it's little parcels. I think it's over 100. Oh, yeah, over. so some are large, some are small. Some are as small as our Bumpus Park, which is on Duxbury Bay, which is a lovely spot that people get married at. Yeah. And we have another little piece right on Bluefish River called Maxwell Gard Maxwell Reynolds Garden now. It's a lovely little spot to come and um, just uh, enjoy, enjoy nature. But we also have larger parcels like Round Pond, and that's beautiful walking trails around Round Pond. Um, so it runs the gamut from little tiny triangles of land yeah. in between like street intersections to something as expansive as Lapham Woods or Round Pond. Perfect. And you were responsible for maintaining all those lands? Well, thankfully not me personally. <laughs> we have an amazing <laughs> lands committee okay. uh, at the DRHS and they take wonderful 
care of our properties. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now you do history and collecting. You collect objects, you collect, um, mm -hmm. you have, the, the, you are here at exhibitions. Talk to me about the collectings mm -hmm. that you do and what you okay. do with those. So we are an institution that actively collects not only three-dimensional objects, but also documents. And so we are continually expanding our collection and we have thousands of objects with amazing um, historic clothing collection and objects that go from um, the colonial period all the way to the 20th century. So the You Are Here exhibit was quite exciting for us. We were all locked down during COVID. People couldn't come to us. So we, um, on exhibit panels, placed around town at places that people were still having access to, we married the history of that particular location with objects or documents in our collection. And so as you got out in the world as much as you could during those um, days, we still had contact with you. That's, that's an excellent idea. So people that may not have been exposed to that information, mm -hmm. you put it on, like you said, on panels. Yes, that's fabulous. and it lives on. It lives on today at the Senior Center in Duxbury. We put a uh, majority of the panels there. So if if you happen to be there, you can still read and see them. And then we have a handful here at the archives as well. It was just too good to Oh, die. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Use it twice. Why not? Now, recently mm -hmm. you did a tour of the Mayflower Cemetery. Can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. What the purpose was and sure. how many people? Um, so I think that Cemeteries are one of the best places to learn history. You're outside, you're, um, you know, so if you, if you don't like learning in a classroom kind of way, you get to be outside, you're moving around, and all sorts of stories can be told in a cemetery. So we do a few themed tours during the course of the year at our cemetery, the local cemeteries. Um, and yesterday's, the theme was Patriot's Day. So we talked a lot about at various graves, life in colonial Doxbury leading up to the war, what life was like within the war, and then some of the soldiers' graves who fought in the war. So it was a beautiful day yesterday out there. Yeah. That's wonderful. And during the course of the year, especially now that we're hopefully mm -hmm. opened back up to the world, what kinds of things do you sponsor during the course of the year? Well, now that, I mean, knock on wood, right, everyone, right. that we're at the end of COVID. <laughs> um, this year, for the first time in two summers, our Bradford House will be open again on Tremont Street. And that's a house museum that's really close to my heart because when I came on board in 2009, it was called the Gershom Bradford House. And it told a lovely story of the sea captain who lived there. And it gave very uh, abbreviated story of the amazing women that lived in the house. And in 2017, we relaunched the Bradford House, uh, we reimagined it as a women's museum, telling women's 19th century history through the lens of the four Bradford sisters who lived in that house, um, telling their Civil War nursing stories, mm -hmm. abolition, uh, temperance, etc. even later life, their disabilities and aging. Um, and so we're really happy that that will be open again this summer. Um, and we will have a small exhibit new this summer in the house about shopping local, mm -hmm. Duxbury shopping in the 19th century. Our King Caesar house um, was open last summer and it will be open again this summer. That's a beautiful house on Duxbury Bay, built by one of the wealthiest and most important shipbuilders in Massachusetts uh, in the 19th century. Um, it's a gorgeous place to come and learn about some local and really regional history. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be open as well. That's wonderful. Yay. Yay. <laughs> now, do you have fundraisers or how do you, how do you get funded? So we um, have been around for a long time. So luckily we have a lovely endowment, mm -hmm. which I can't really speak much about. I've just heard about, uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yes, we, um, we do have some fundraisers in the fall. We're going to have a 
really great fundraiser that is just taking shape now. Um, and the theme for that one will be the gold rush, mm -hmm. 40 plus men from Duxbury headed out for the gold rush. So that should be a fun night. Sure. And that will be in our Nathaniel Windsor Jr. house. Um, and of course, a not fundraiser, but one of our biggest events is our King Caesar Christmas event, which has been going on for 50 years. This will be the 51st. Um, and that takes place um, usually the first or second weekend in December. And the house is decorated beautifully. Yeah. And it's a, oh, just a wonderful party. Yeah, I remember seeing pictures of the decorating mm. the inside yeah. of that house, which is pretty, pretty amazing. They decorate that. Yeah, better than I could ever. Right. right. <laughs> well, so there's there's a treasure trove of information um, on both your website and your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for joining us today and what Thanks wonderful for work me. you're doing. We really appreciate you being here. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you. To attend events, tours, donate, or learn more, visit DuxburyHistory.org. If you've enjoyed this video by The Local Scene, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.